Thanos may be in possession of the Infinity Gauntlet, but we got one better. We got the chairs, and the chairs are more powerful than the Infinity Stones combined. We'll put this guy through his own trial of the Gauntlet. This is developed by uh, Broken Dinosaur Studios, developed on the Unity engine as a student project. Uh, you may remember them from the hate mail section a couple weeks ago. Anyways, what is it? In Trials of the Gauntlet, you wake up in the courtyard of a steampunked mansion and your arm replaced uh, with an electric grappling hook. You must use your new arm to solve puzzles, traverse the mansions, and fight your way to the top of the clock tower where you confront the mad scientist who did this to you. The devs did send us some keys for this. Uh, Good on them for that. And if you don't know what this segment is, this is Chair QA edition. As Ven has so succinctly put it in the show notes, we are here to rip your game apart. It's where we uh, take a game, we talk about it, we play it a little bit, maybe do a bit of quality assurance that... uh, the developers may, should have done before they brought it to market. And we give you a little chair based on some, uh, or give you a chair based on some scores. Just one chair. There you go. Get. One chair. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking drunk today, man. Leave me alone. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. And we got our categories of doom. Thanks with the working. Shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let's kick this off. Ben, how did this Unity game fare on Ubuntu? It's Unity, motherfucker. How do you expect, man? Unity works out of the box on Linux. You have to be exceptionally fucktarded in order to make something not work correctly with Unity on Linux. Speaking of exceptionally fucktarded, um, the first thing you might notice with the fucktardedness is the Unity screen of Nope. I have not seen that in a while. Uh, yet, there it is. Minus two chairs off the bat. Um, there's not a cursor in the main menu. Yes, there is a single fucking pixel in the main menu. 3840 by 2160, <laughs> there's not a cursor in the main menu, okay? It took me a minute to figure out that there was even a way to get into game proper. Speaking of cursors, it'll go flying off your screen. It doesn't lock in windowed mode. Nope, nope. And you see, if you're watching the video version, there's a grappling mechanic to this, so you can imagine the fuckery that causes in any possible way, basically making, for me at least, the game completely unfucking playable. Won't you? Because I've died. I'm dead. Inside. (laughs) You died. We're, we're all dead inside, man. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, the It doesn't lock your cursor in full screen either, which is really annoying when you have separate nope. screens. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit more in the controls and fun segments because I have some interesting anecdotes about this. Regardless, um, because of that Unity screen, and nope, and because of the myriad technical issues, the game does, in fact, work. You can play it to some degree, <laughs> so it'll get two chairs for me on Fedora 2664-bit, the i7-6700K GTX 980. Pedro. Yeah, no, it, it, not only can you play it to some degree, you can actually finish it, but more on that later. Yeah, no, uh, I saw uh, Ven's notes about, oh, there's no cursor. Yeah, there is. It's a two by two teeny, teeny, tiny little square. Even at a 1080p screen, you can see that, oh, look, there's something there. Uh, but yeah, it is there, uh, but the Unity screen of Nope in 2018 gets you dinged an automatic two chair. So over here on Ubuntu 1604, uh, with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080, it gets a two chairs. All right, well, that's one chair for Mix with the Working. <laughs> it's not, not a very good start. <laughs> Shiny and sounds wise, this is, I mean... Uh, Ven, we were talking about this in the uh, in the pre pre super show shows, and mm-hmm. but you got it right. This looks like something off. It looks like a high res version of like a game you would find on like the Amiga or the BBC Micro or some some other game that would have been distributed. Yeah, on I, I, was going to, I, I think I said an Apple IIe color or something like that. So I, yeah, some some yeah. something like that. But it it it's it's evocative of that, which I guess it works for the genre of the game it's supposed to be because this was based on an assignment to design a Metroidvania game, which it clearly did. So good on them for that i mean it gets the job done there's nothing particularly egregious there's no random graphical glitches or anything like that and there's nothing really noteworthy about the soundscape here other than there's maybe some beep boops i don't know i couldn't hear it over the sound of me grinding my teeth (laughs) so uh anyways this this gets two chairs for me for the shining sounds give it to me pedro yeah, it's uh, it's got very little in the way of uh, audiovisual feedback when you take damage from enemies. If you hit the spikes, there's uh, the usual recoil, and you get 
pushed back a little bit. But if you get hit by an enemy, you're, uh, especially the bosses, uh, your HP bar just drops a little bit, and that's it. You get no other visual feedback for that. It's kind of meh. The background music, as you first started and you listen to it in the um, in the main menu, okay, it doesn't sound terrible, but then you realize that it's just a very short loop, and it just keeps looping. So, it gets a little bit annoying. It, it It's serviceable. Again, you can finish the game. So, two chairs, it's a, it's a passing score, right? Fair enough, man. Listen, I'm not even going to say this looks good for a first effort. This is Place Art Plus, and that's kind of being generous. Your color palette, what you're seeing right there, is brown mixed with varying shades of dark. Kind of looks like dirt, more than the fun section. Uh, you know, it has some, like, wannabe chiptune synth bullshit going on in the background. It's there. It's also available as DLC as part of the soundtrack, 99 cents. Oh, fuck me. Um, and the dude kind of makes a noise when he swings. And you're just mm-hmm. looking at some of this, the level coloring back there with a the bookcase. It's color blindness. And, uh, also, Alboy Cape. Kind of ripped that off. I'm just saying you did. I'll, I'll give it a solid two. <laughs> Uh, that's two chairs for shiny and sounds. How about some controls, Pedro? You played it with a controller, believe it or not. Uh, well, I uh, Ven also I I checked the show notes uh, and Ven said, "Oh, it's not picking up on the controller." So I gave it the eight bit do here, and it did pick up on it. The mappings were all wrong, but it picked up on it. And if you can figure out what the hell the Unity scream of Nope is telling you that the controls do. You can uh, rebind things, so I can't really dig at the two chairs, but it, it's already lost one. Uh, also, this uh, this brain made my haywire go game. <laughs> at one point, I just lost. I, I didn't have any hand-eye coordination because I didn't know what hell kind of button I needed to press to progress because I was just so very confused, which is admittedly very easy to do. Um, it's... Fucky. I guess that's the best way I have to describe it. it. Even if you're playing with the keyboard and mouse, even though they bound the uh, the WASD keys correctly, if you're playing with the directional arrows and you hit the up directional arrow, expecting it to reel yourself in on the grappling hook, it doesn't out of the box. So it gets three chairs because, again, I managed to finish the game, so it's... It's serviceable. How does this game control? It fucking doesn't, man. It does not support the Areola <laughs> controller. It does not support the steamy goodness that Gaben's nipples give. Um, that kind of sucks. It's kind of bullshit. And I am not going to try to reconfigure something with the Unity Scream. No, this is 2018, motherfuckers. So you get two chairs right from that. And as I mentioned, just with the mix with the working section, it doesn't lock your gerbil input. Therefore... It would be really horrible if this game relied on a mechanic that caused you to swing around your gerbil and use it. Wait a minute, it fucking does. Yeah, it does, Brad. <laughs> so, yeah, fuck this noise. Technically, I could play it, so I can't give it zero cheers. I'm going to give you one, just because I can't give you zero. Fuck that, man. What the hell? Oh, yeah, no, the, the swinging mechanic is just, like, hot fucking garbage. Oh, man. And I'm a fan of Bionic Commando. I played a lot of it back mm-hmm. in the day. Yes. I like the platformer swingy. Yeah, or my, mine was on the Game Boy because that was that was what I had at an S growing up. But regardless, uh, it's, it's was that pr- Tesla same in or Hitler? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it uh, was Adolf Tesla. <laughs> Te- yes, All right. two, 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 two times tessellation. <laughs> there you go, Tes- Tesselation. <laughs> That's show title. Anyways, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so. The, the swinging mechanic here is just complete terrible, or completely terrible. Uh, the reeling is either hypersensitive or doesn't reel you up at all. And harping on, uh, or piggybacking on Ven's point about it not locking your gerbil, if you have separate X screens and your mouse goes outside the confines of the game, the mm-hmm. controls just completely fuck up, and you have to straight up restart the game if you want any semblance of usability. I'll give it two because they work, kind of, sort of, but really I should have given them one. Oh, man. <laughs> So, so that, that, that's uh, that's two chairs for the control segment, and to finally put a bow on it, fun. Ben, did you have fun? Two chairs, Ben. Everything's so bad. The, the controls are sluggish. The they move slow. The animations bad. 
controls are just like refried ass level design would make a three-year-old with fucking mario maker look like a flying spaghetti monster damn master a protege uh, prodigy man you know what check it out man as a student project in all seriousness it's neat it's not bad for a first effort you know uh out of the box like hey this is the thing we made for a project cool the thing is the, 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 the thing is brad <laughs> Brad, you put a fucking student project up for sale on the Steam store, contributing to the endless waves of bullshit we have to wade through on a daily basis. You spent a whopping three months on this, sons, and it shows. One chair. Yeah, and going, going back to the whole student game thing, I mean, they, they, they said this from the outset, so adjust your expectations accordingly. However, as, as as I said, I played a lot of Bionic Commando in the day. So back in the day, so I'm used to this style of game. But when the entire core mechanic of like how you move around in your platformer just doesn't work well, you're gonna have some serious problems. Period. You gotta have like good fundamental gameplay to make it at all entertaining. Period. Um. Yeah. No. That's the swinging is terrible, especially when they're like, "Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta swing and catch in Spider-Man." No, that that does not happen on the first, second, or fifth attempt. It takes several attempts. And um, I actually I made some decent progress. I got through the first boss. I made my way back across the thing where you had to jump up. But there was one jump I just couldn't get because my hands were just not having it. <laughs> so I closed the game, walked away for a little bit, came mm -hmm. back. And using that fucking microscopic pixel of a cursor, <laughs> accidentally hit the new game button. And all of a sudden, I got zapped all the way back to the beginning of the game. To which, to which I said, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care anymore. Peace out, y'all. Yeah. So here, here's the deal. Like, if, 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 this, if, this were, if this were, like, a, if I were a teacher grading this as an assignment, I'd maybe give it a B. It displays, like, an understanding of the fundamentals of, like, Metroidvania game design, which is what the assignment was. However, school's out, son. This is a chair acquisition. And you get one. Honestly, uh, adjusting expectations, uh, well, having my expectations adjusted as they were, I enjoyed the 40 odd minutes it took me to beat the game. Uh, I guess in a world full of big open sandboxes, it's just a teeny tiny little self contained story with a little platformy, well, a very fucky platformer uh, attached to it. Um, is uh, it's, it's refreshing. Let's go with that. Uh, there are plenty of bugs. The swinging physics, as Jordan has already mentioned, are absolutely fucking horrible. Uh, but it didn't overstay its welcome. But I'm guessing that's part of the whole, yeah, it takes you less than 50 minutes to beat the game. But I did actually regret the 50 or 48 minutes it took me, according to Steam, to beat this game. I would honestly like to play more of this with better controls, better feedback, better audio bits, better graphics, and a hell of a lot less buggy. I'll give it two chairs, but it doesn't really matter. I think you're being overly generous. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, that's... Well, that's <laughs> so, someone messed up the math, because that's one chair for fun, not two chairs, Pedro. And that's one Oops. chair for <laughs> Trials of the Gauntlet. It's okay, Pedro. We don't expect you to use your brain on Linux Gamecast. We just expect you to talk out of hey, your ass. Hey, man, I'm going to say um, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, that's going to be a solid note, but it's $1.99. That's the thing. I just, the only thing that really grinds my gears is there's nothing wrong with Babby's first collision detection game. Uh, what is wrong is Babby's first collision detection game available on Steam for $1.99. That's the fucked up part. Yeah, like maybe, maybe throw, throw this up for free on an itch.io. <laughs> give you like, oh, hey, check out our game. Give us your feedback. We want to like do better at game design. That probably would have been better than putting it up for sale on Steam. Uh, yeah. I mean, good, good on good on them. They kind of they kind of knew what they were getting into when they sent us this. And, and do and keep in mind, this is coming from three grown adults wearing wizard robes. 
on a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, it's, hey, I, I, I take exception to that. This is a summoner's robe, not a wizard's robe. <laughs> Summoner <Nerd. lives> matter. <laughs> it's I want to uh, be the warlock. Dollar ninety nine uh, or one pound seventy, and you can finish it well within the refund window. So, if you want to be that guy, you can always refund it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You absolutely can go take that $1.99 and go buy yourself a Pepsi. 